Full disclosure, I'm a bit of a Topaz fangirl. Basically, every AI video I create gets run through either Topaz Studio, locally on my 5090, or in the cloud via Topaz Astra. So when I was fortunate enough to get beta access to Precise 2, the latest innovation in video upscaling tech from the folks that brought us Topaz Astra, I was plenty stoked. They were kind enough to give me a huge pile of credits to go all in on testing this new diffusion creation, and today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about it. From what it is and how it works, to how well it performs at various upscaling tasks, all the way to how you can get the best use out of what this impressive new tool has to offer. But before we get into all of that, you might be asking yourself, why are all these shots, close-ups, prominently featuring attractive women in various states of being attractive? The first reason is simple. YouTube provides creators with analytical tools to better understand who their viewers are, and I know how to read. Additionally, Precise 2 is designed specifically to improve the upscaling quality of human faces including things like hair, teeth, and especially eyes, all while producing more natural human skin textures. In fact, one of the stated goals of the Precise 2 model release is to avoid the common upscaling pitfall of inorganic or plastic-looking skin. How it gets this done under the hood is interesting. Precise 2 doesn't jump right into upscaling the video like previous flavors of Astra. Instead, it takes the first frame and upscales that image to use as a reference for the video generation to come. With this refined frame as a sort of landmark, the video pass can then do its upscaling thing. More or less, that's how Precise 2 uses this multi-pass process to generate the aforementioned higher quality upscaling for human skin, faces, and features, all with the goal of producing more photorealistic outputs. Now, in theory, this means that Precise 2 isn't optimized to perform as well with other types of shots that don't feature people and faces. So I didn't bother to test it on any of those, just kidding. I tried it on skeletons, blurry skeletons, talking reindeer, dancing robots, creepy bunnies, flying pizza sharks at baseball stadiums, and for good measure, a drunk kangaroo. Generally speaking, I thought the model performed quite well, even on these shots it isn't necessarily intended for, and some of which probably should not exist. But let's get into some shots that Precise 2 is actually meant to be used on, like this total fox, or whatever that animal is on her shoulder. One thing to keep in mind when it comes to diffusion-based video upscalers is that Astra is essentially in competition with itself. So I'll often be looking at the improvement Precise 2 shows over its sibling Precise 1. If we focus in on the character's face, the difference in the quality of the eyes jumps out to me instantly. Precise 2 isn't entirely fixing the slightly not-so-round iris examples, but it is doing worlds better than the alternative. Precise 1 is just kind of upscaling the janky eyes as is. I also also notice the quality of the skin. The Precise 1 example has heavy mannequin vibes. Precise 2 looks much more natural to my eye, though it can start to edge on looking a bit airbrushed. Let's compare some close-ups. Here you can really see the blocky eye problem so common in AI image and video generation. Not just in the iris, but in the pupil as well. Precise 2 doesn't entirely solve the freaky AI, but it is clearly more capable, all the way down to producing some of the fine filament structures extending out from the pupil's edge. Whatever the Astra team is using to identify and fix the eyes in these shots is certainly working. The skin is also much less synthetic looking to my actual eye, although I am again noticing a bit of an airbrushing effect. In shots with more prominent freckles and blemishes, enough of the complexion makes it through the airbrush to more or less give us the same look. But in more subtle examples, the freckles and texture from the original scene are more or less lost. The skin texture produced still looks good in my opinion, but it has changed. Real quick, why does she have two pairs of glasses on? Because I don't think that- oh wait, it's probably astigmatism. Speaking of hard to read, all of these close-ups are mid-journey animations, so they started out very low resolution. From a 720 start, the airbrushing effect is much less less noticeable. It's still there, but it's much better. And depending on the shot, the skin texture produced in clips from 720 or higher looks really nice. This video, for example, is from Kling, so it started at 1080 and it came out great. Or in this example, the skin, the eyes, the mouth, the hair, I think all of the things look fantastic here, right down to the sequins and cinematic soft focus background. A lot of vlogging style content tends to have a ton of parallax in the background, so I wanted to see how well the face focus Precise 2 model would handle that kind of shot. And for the most part, it seemed to handle it quite well. I tried spinning and walking and more spinning into some lens flares, whatever this high speed background with motion blur is, even some driving footage. Now that I think of it, shouldn't she be looking forward? This seems 
seems not entirely safe. I wanted to try some black and white footage, and thankfully, this scene is firmly parked. Although, I would assume the same can be said for her recently late husband. With some dust and scratches added in post, you can get a pretty solid 4K classic Hollywood looking shot from Precise 2. Well, looks like she's off to another hapless fellow, or possibly a hit and run. AI models just don't seem to grasp the concept of looking at the road. Did I mention you can count me out on self-driving cars? Now, these mid-journey to cling black and white shots are not perfect to start with, but I can clearly see the higher quality in the face, skin, and mouth with Precise 2 versus its predecessor. As the camera starts to pull out more, the license plates and most of the faces in the scene are a bit of a disaster. But I'm gonna chalk that up to mid-journey being mostly a disaster with low-resolution faces and totally a disaster with text. Precise 2 seems to handle black and white clips just fine. So moving forward a few decades in cinematic history, this knockoff Bond girl allowed me to test Precise 2's ability at handling multiple different planes of focus in one clip. The mountains and console in the background are on one out-of-focus plane, while the gilded heater starts in focus along with the beehive babe and then moves out of focus as she points it at what I assume is a well martini fellow off screen. I really like what I see here. Most everything in Aster is pretty good at the multi-focal plane thing, but with Precise 2 using an upscaled start frame as a reference for the entire generation, I was worried the model might get lost when the hand cannon changed the focal plane it was on. I would hate to see the new multi-pass pipeline include a hidden nerf to the overall capabilities of the upscaling, and the fact that this looks like it went off without a hitch is very reassuring. I suppose this is as good a time as any to start looking at some wider angle shots. Precise 2 clearly does a great job with faces, but how will it fare when there's lots of objects and backgrounds taking up screen space? As you can see here, it seems to handle this situation flawlessly. It isn't phased by the blinking or spinning reels or the camera tracking along with the synthetic actress. That's what I expected, but again, it's reassuring. I was a little concerned that sunglasses might trip up the new upscaling workflow. If it's designed to focus on features like eyes, what would it do when they're partially obscured? These heavily 70s sunglass ladies put that worry to sleep pretty quickly. The skin still looks solid in medium shots, if a little airbrushed, but it's much less noticeable at distance. The different lighting levels at various distances in these outdoor shots looks good. I was curious if things would be washed out in the daylight. Again, I was warned that things that aren't faces or people might prove problematic, but these outdoor backgrounds look great. Now, I did start to find some issues with fine textures, like here on the shoulders, but I'm gonna get into that in a little bit. Folks from Topaz also warned me that Precise 2 might struggle with scenes that are more animated or stylized in nature. So I decided to conjure an array of various dark fantasy, sci-fi, heavily stylized, animated, mostly elven challenge ladies for Precise 2 to chew on. Frankly, I think they came out looking even better than the more conventional shots I was already impressed with. This shot, for example, is an entirely animated freak show from Mid Journey. Precise 1 does its level best, it looks alright, but its big brother isn't phased at all. Precise 2 takes the skin, the eyes, the mouth, all of the features of the face, and even the hair and horns, and turns it into something much more impressive to look at, if a bit bizarre. Are. And that trend would continue. Precise 1 was more or less just upscaling everything in the frame at the same level of quality. But with Precise 2, faces were going from fairly average to very impressive. This shot is pretty dark, and I didn't think there was much that could be done with it. But Precise 2 brought in brighter details to the face that really took it to another level. If you were ever curious what the resulting animation would look like if you plugged the prompt Elf Queen by Frank Frazetta into Mid Journey, I guess now you know the answer. Precise 2 was really killing it with these graphic novel come to life style animations. The focus on faces, I think in particular the eyes and skin that Precise 2 brought to the table cleaned up a ton of the janky bits that Mid Journey left all over the place. These shots are not just bigger and sharper, they are fundamentally better shots. These iridescent fantasy sci-fi ladies were another challenge I came up with. What would Precise do with faces that are supposed to be kinda shiny? Turns out the answer is absolutely nail it. These are some of my favorite outcomes from my entire testing session. The originals are weird, and I love weird, but they're very low quality. Precise 1 gets them to 4K, but a very plastic, uncanny, moving doll sort of 4K. Precise 2 makes them look really good. Maybe not entirely real, as they are ridiculous creatures, but certainly striking, and in my opinion, raising the bar for what we can expect from AI video outputs. Things can be more than just melty plastic faces with a tool like Precise 2. Another use case this is not at all designed for is archival footage. So, obviously, I tested archival footage. Century 21 Calling is a mid-century modern infomercial by Bell Telephone, from the 1962 World's Fair. That is more or less about telling two gee whiz teens that they should basically be on the telephone all of the time. I wonder how that turned out. 
Sometimes our teens look a bit plastic, especially when they are not the focus of the frame or when multiple characters are sharing the screen, or basically anytime anyone is moving. This is a problem I've seen with upscaling archival footage before. The less face the model has to work with, the more you get swirly junk. That being said, some of these precise two shots are not half bad considering. I cut together some solo shots of the narrator lady that are the closest thing I could find to a close-up to give the model the best chance I could, and I think it did a halfway decent job. It is, however, very soft throughout the frame, almost to the point of looking like an animation or a rotoscoping of the source. To be honest, if I needed this for a documentary or something, I would probably just use the original, as it is reasonably high quality footage for the period, and the retro vibes make the lower resolution feel right at home anyway. Upscalers tend to work better on archival shots of big objects or buildings. Low resolution faces, obscured by layers of dust and grain and possibly digital compression, not so much. I understand this is not an intended use case of Precise 2, archival shots are just part of my upscaling testing regimen at this point, so I wanted to give it a go. Precise 1 probably did a better overall job on the upscale here, with the exception of the face. These teeth and eyes are pretty scary, but it did give me an idea for a workflow that I'm going to share with you in just a bit. But first, I want to take a look at how Precise 2 handles more complex textures in shots with faces. Often I was reasonably impressed with how well Precise 2 handled things like gemstones, although I don't know how they wound up in this lady's hair. Motion blur certainly helps, but I was more or less content with these texture outcomes. And sparkle shots like this are no small feet for diffusion upscalers to land. This 20-foot geode I shot last month was more than any diffusion upscaler could handle. All the super fine detail just gets diffused away. I was surprised when I actually wound up getting a better result from local rendering with the GAN model Rhea. Put a pin in that idea as well. To put some of these ideas together, let's take a look at this orange lady who I assume would give me a fake cell number and then move to LA. With no upscale, we can see that her dress is made out of some sort of texture pattern velour with maybe some sequins. It's a 1080 shot, so there is decent resolution here to upscale from. But as soon as I diffusion upscale the scene, we start to lose a lot of the subtle detail in the dress. Precise 2 has the best looking face, no shocker there. Precise 1 has a better dress, but even that dress is much worse than the original. A lot of the detail is just getting diffused away. Remembering the Sparkle Rock, I tried running the shot through Rhea and got a decent looking dress upscale, but obviously the rest of the shot was much worse. The solution I think is pretty obvious. The archival shot gives us a simplified example. After Effects has a face tracker. That makes it pretty straightforward to swap out the not so good precise one face. A couple of clicks to color correct and now you get the best of both worlds. The lady in orange is just a slightly more complicated version that involves the roto brush. Spoiler alert, the roto brush does most of the work. It cuts a dress shaped hole in the high quality precise 2 footage so that I can swap in the better looking GAN upscaled velour. By the way, if you have access to Astra but not Topaz Studio, most of the GAN models are available in the Astra interface for cloud rendering as well. And that feature was added fairly recently, so you might not have noticed it yet. This is the quick and dirty version of this kind of composite upscaling. I didn't mess with it outside of a bit of edge feather, but if I add some motion blur and a little bit of film grain, I start to get an output that I should maybe put a made with AI watermark on. Although the Insano license plates probably give the game away. The idea here is that models like Precise 2, while a huge advancement in my opinion, are not the end game of video upscaling. If you have access to Astra, use Precise 2. If you need to upscale any kind of human face. It is the best model for that I have seen hands down. But it is still just one tool in the toolbox. You have a hammer, doesn't make everything a nail. Sometimes the best tool is a garbage mat or a quick auto track in After Effects. Speaking of which, I do not know the 11 herbs and spices that go into the models that the Astro team creates. But if any of these multi-passes involves generating segmentation maps for faces, eyes, mouths, or whatever, I would love to be able to output just those mats. It might save me some masking or roto or tracking in After Effects if I can just have the mat of where the model has already decided the human face is. Now that these models are getting more advanced, they're starting to differentiate into specialties. To get any particular shot to look its best, you might need to combine the output put of several models, which is why I want more mats. But hey, maybe our future inference overlords will just put us all to work in the rotoscope mines anyway. Or maybe our currency will be how many likes and subscribes you gave to small YouTube channels in the before times. The larger point is that using the right tool in any given situation can be crucial, but it's not always a snap to know which tool is the right one at any given time. That's why I'm constantly testing the latest AI imaging, video, and upscaling models that I can get my hands on. Take for example my recent four-way comparison 
comparison between VO3.1, Kling 2.5, Hilo 2.3, and LTX2. I tested these leading image to video generators on their prompt adherence and ability to produce believable emotional expressions from characters. Because not everything is a vaguely tipsy Bond girl or an aloof iridescent space elf. You can check that out right now if you're ready to keep learning everything you can about the rapidly advancing AI tools that are constantly being released all around us. As for Precise 2, I am seriously impressed. If you need to upscale human faces, features, or skin, I haven't seen anything better. But stay tuned to this space, because when the next upgrade does come out, I plan to be testing that too. That's gonna do it for me today. Thanks for watching, have a good one.